Welcome to Financial Education for the Nation. My name is Warren Shoot, and today it is raining cats and dogs. It seriously is out there. It's terrible weather, and uh, just a week ago we had beautiful sunshine. However, to brighten your day is the lovely smiley face of Paul. How are you, sir? <laughs> Hello, Warren. Thank you for that lovely intro. I'm good. Are you well? Are you okay? I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not on top form. I've got a bit of a pain in my back here, up on my shoulders, where I've kind of slept funny, I think, I'm not sure. And I don't have a cold, really bad cold, but I'm not running on full steam. I've missed the gym the last couple of mornings, had a bit of a snooze in the in, in bed, um, and just trying to sort of dose up on things like lem sips and stuff, just trying to get myself back on onto the running kill, because I'm actually off on holiday next week, so uh, I want to make sure I uh, hit the ground running when I'm on the beach. Yeah, sounds good. Well, let's hope you've got enough energy for today, because I think I we've, we've had another query in, and... Universal credit has come up, and, and someone's asked us to talk about that. And, and where do you stand on universal credit? Okay, so the question was around you know, planning on universal credit. What do we do? How do we do it? That kind of thing. So, first and foremost, listeners, I am not a universal credit expert. Okay, so I do not want to sit here and tell you what you should do, shouldn't do, and the ins and outs, how to improve your claim, that kind of thing, because it's not my area. What I do know is universal credit is being phased in between a couple of years ago and 2023. Um, it's replacing lots of other means-tested benefits. Uh, some of those I've looked up are income support, child tax credit, working tax credit, housing benefit. They expect about 3 million people to go on it. So it is here to stay. There's been lots of negative uh, press about it, uh, but it's here to stay. It's very complex, as all benefits are. Everything from the, it's not a benefit, but everything from the state pension um, through to universal credit, the way it's calculated and stuff is quite complex. It's got the basic amount um, that you can receive. Now, the basic amount, look at my notes, the basic amount is about £317 for a single person over 25 or £498 for a couple over 25. Um, and then on, that's per month. And then on top of that, you start adding on additional allowances. So whether you've got children, et cetera, and that kind of thing. Um, so the amounts you can get, I think Universal Credit Award goes up to uh, £1,600 for a couple or £1,100 for a single individual. And I think there's even an enhancement if you're in London. So they're quite serious amounts of money. Um, they're, they are reduced if you earn money, okay? Because they're means tested. Means tested means based on your means what do we get? So if you earn, if you get the full amount, then you start earning, it's reduced. So it almost like disincentivizes people to go and get a job because they're not getting like a pound for pound benefit. Um, also, if you have savings, um, it can also be reduced. So it's anything from, like, I think it was £6,000 up to about £16,000. So and if, if you can have savings up to £6,000 and it's not affected. Now, so that's a great place to start, isn't it? We can save up some money up to £6,000, you're not affected. Um, between six and sixteen thousand pounds, I think it's tapered down the amount of benefit you get. But once you hit sixteen thousand pounds with the savings, I think your universal credit can be withdrawn altogether. <clears throat> so, rather than going into any more detail on the specifics of universal credit, what I want to start talking about is planning whilst on universal credit. What you can do, things you can do, things you can do to um, move things forward. I was going to say improve things, but if I'm honest, it depends on what your outcome is. And we were just talking before we come on air. Yeah, so it, it's really important to you. And I know it's where you start pretty much every conversation about money that you have with, with people, regardless of what their wealth and circumstance is. And it's not always easy to, to kind of think about that. Most of us typically perhaps don't stop and think about that enough. And, and I'm sure you'd say that because you're such a big believer in it. But how do we go through that process? I mean, well, my outcome is to, to have enough money so that I, I'm, I'm comfortable and, and don't have to work anymore. But how do we start narrowing things down and, and find something to focus on? It, it, you're right. It's in the money plan, the reason step one of the, plan, the money plan is what's your outcome is because if we don't know what it is we want, we'll never achieve it. And I think often that's why so many people go through life unfulfilled because they're never really defined 
what it is they want. Now, some people say they've never really defined success, but we don't have to um, go that far. We just have to say, what is it we really want? What's our outcome? You know, what, what is it we want to achieve in life? Uh, what is it we want to achieve for the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 20 years? Where do we see ourselves? <clears throat> now, I used to talk to clients about the rocking chair moment. You sat on the ro in your rocking chair with your spouse, you're 85 years old, you look back on your life, what did you miss out on? What didn't you do? And it's really just trying to get people to move themselves from a state of consciousness of being disassociated with life in their vision to just doing the do to actually saying, you know, life is not a continuum. You know, precious time is running out for all of us. We're just not going along life like this. We have an end date and time is being squeezed out. And one day we'll reach that day where there is no more time. Um, and I've got to say, understanding what it is you really want in life, setting yourself an outcome, setting yourself some goals to move towards, I think gives you a bit more juice. As human beings, anything living has to grow. Anything living grows. And I think by having growth and development, it gives us juice in life. So whether you're on universal credit or whether you're earning a million pounds a year, what's your outcome? What is it you want from your life? Make it as if you knew you if you knew you couldn't fail. What is it you would do? Start brainstorming. Start brainstorming. And I spend about a third of the money plan, a third of the book um, on this section because I think it's that important. Having some kind of purpose or reason in life for you to do stuff, and we're defined by our decisions. So our decisions will shape how our future lies and our, our future is shaped it's not our conditions it's not where we are now so many people have turned things around is it easy no it's not always easy but it is straightforward it's deciding what it is you want and then taking consistent action to move towards it so what is it you want do you want to stay on universal credit for the rest of your life that could be a decision i'm not here to judge that if that's the case because of your circumstances that you absolutely know that you're never ever going to get off them then that's your decision. My job isn't to try and convince you to change otherwise. But if you see this as a temporary measure, it's helping you through a difficult period in your life because we all go through them. We all go through difficult periods. So if this is a support net and it's helping you through a temporary period in your life, how can you make the most of it? What would need to happen for you to come out the other side, because you will, in the best position you can be? And one of the things I thought about when I was preparing for this is studying. You know, learning helps us grow. Learning helps us improve. What is it you would like to do with the rest of your life? Is there a particular job that you think would be your perfect job? Can you get yourself onto some kind of training, some kind of development, so you get the skills now, so that when you come out the other side, when you've finished with your universal credit period, and you start in the employment or start your own business, you're equipped and you're hitting the ground running. Okay, so it's really about taking some time to decide how it is you want to spend the rest of your life. And you've got two choices. You can either spend the rest of your life um, on universal credit or its replacement, or you can decide to use this as a temporary measure that will transfer you from where you are to where you want to be. And this thing takes time. You've just got to first decide where it is you want to go. And just briefly, because when we are going through difficult periods, it's really hard to look forwards and it's really hard to start thinking positively and making positive decisions and actions that are, that are going to have an impact. Just briefly, do you have any, any hints or ideas as to how we can help with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, definitely. So motion creates emotion, okay? If you ever meet a, 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 a sad, a depressed a, a person who's really funny and hard, are they, what's their physiology? Have a think. If you think about someone who you know is always sort of a bit down, are they jumping around? Are they speaking fast? Are they breathing deeply? Are they full of energy? Or are they kind of slunched over, moving slowly, looking at the ground and taking deep, shallow, slow breaths? Yeah, so motion creates emotion. And it's a very simple thing, but getting outside, getting off electronics, Getting outside moving. So if you're able to run, great. If you're able to walk, great. If you just have to be moved around, 
great. Just get outside and move around. And I think that's why I'm so affected by the weather, because when it's weather like this, I, I find it harder to get outside and move around. But you can still do it. Get outside, move around. Do some breathing exercises. So, so meditation or mindfulness. There's some great apps out there now from, I think it's called Mindfulness or Headspace, something like that, Calm. Use some of these apps. Use some meditation, some deep breathing exercises, and relax your body. Okay, so moving it, relaxing your mind, relax your body, getting rid of electronics, um, and ask yourself good questions. So we are consistently, internally, asking yourself questions. I've just, I've just said that internally. You said, are we asking ourselves questions? You've just yeah. verified it internally, because that's our human nature. Ask and we shall receive. So ask yourself good questions. Rather than ask yourself questions like, why does this always happen to me? Why don't you ask a question like, what could be great about this period in my life? How could I look back on this period in my life and say, I made the most of it? What could I do today to make my future tomorrows even better? Okay, so ask yourself good questions, making, self, making sure you move and making sure you rest your mind. And then there are things like nutrition and hydration. So just trying to avoid, don't cut sugar out, but trying to avoid so much sugar so you don't have sugar lows. Okay, so eat sugar's fine, but don't just have so much that you, you know, binging on a big bar of chocolate every day is not going to do your um, blood sugar levels very good. And that affects all your hormones and also hydration. Just make sure you drink plenty of water. And I mean, plenty of water. I'm talking between two and three liters a day. Okay, so making sure you're fully hydrated. So most people are unhydrated. These things are going to affect how you feel. And when you do all the things right, when you're moving, you're resting your mind, you're asking yourself good questions, you're eating a good diet, balanced diet, um, and you keep yourself hydrated, you will feel differently. Okay, and that's what you can do. So that can help you take you from feeling low and fed up to feeling good. But the two key things what to do it immediately is moving your body. Okay, and asking yourself good questions. All right, good stuff. So let's let's bring it back then. So first job, try and try and set our outcomes, our, our far outcomes, and then the steps that are that are hopefully going to take us there. And then again, inertia is a very strong force, and and starting to do that isn't isn't it's a lot easier said than done, perhaps. So so where do we go from there? We've got our goals in place. What next? What what happens? But it's got, to be, it's got to be step two of the money plan. And I come back to it every single time because it works. The, guys, this is something I just created to um, sell a few books. It's something I've been doing as a financial planner for about 25 years. So a quarter of a century, okay? More than half my life, I've been doing this with clients and it works. It's a proven system. So get financially well organized. So know what's coming in. Are you claiming the maximum amount of benefit that you can? Okay, that's the first thing. Make sure you know what's coming in. Are you, do you know what's going out? Do you know if your expenditure, you've got listed, you've got documented. Do you know what assets you own? That might not be anything, but do you know? Do you know what you owe? Do you know what debts you've got? Are you paying the least amount of interest on the debts as you can? Okay, so you're getting yourself financially well organized. Um, with your money that's going out, with your expenditure, set up the bank account system. There is nothing stopping you because you're on universal credit operating the bank account system. Do I need this? Do I want this? Can I get a similar experience for less? Go through each individual item and just ask yourself, do I need this? Do I want this? Can I get a similar experience for less? What your outcome in doing this is to reduce your expenditure to as lean as possible. Okay. Um, pay yourself a weekly wham. So pay yourself a weekly amount of money. So that's going to cover all of your variable expenditure. So everything from your grocery shopping to getting your hair done to going out with your friends in the evening. Make sure that everything else is automated. So set up by direct debit or standing order so you don't have to think about it. And then every month you should you really, really, really got to try and make sure that there's some money left over. Okay, if it means you've got to eat rice and beans, you've got to eat rice and beans. You've got to make sure there's some money left over. And I suggest you try and make that figure at least 12.5%. Now, some of you will be laughing at this stage or even jumping up and down saying, Warren, you've lost the plot. You know, we're on benefit because we have no money. Um, and what I would say to you about that is what you've done is you've, your lifestyle has grown to meet your income. And it, though it might be a difficult scenario, if you want to make some change, you have to make sure there's some money left over. Okay, so you have to make sure there's something left over each month so that you are progressing. 
okay, forego certain things. It won't necessarily be easy, but it will be straightforward and you will get used to it. If the benefits were cut by a little bit, you would have to make changes. Okay, so it, it, it's, a, it's a tough call, tough lesson, and it, it's hard talking. I might get some criticism for it, and I don't mean to be unkind because I too have gone through difficult periods, but you've just got to ask yourself, do I need this? Do I want this? Can I get a similar experience less? Pay yourself a weekly amount of money, cut your expenditure as lean as possible, and set yourself a goal to start saving some money. You can save some money. You can save up to six thousand pounds in a, in your in your accounts, um, and it will not affect. According to what I've researched, it will not affect your um, universal credit. So set yourself up a goal to save a thousand pounds. Save a thousand pounds, and then look around the house. Is there anything you can sell? What other ways can you generate additional money? Not through earnings necessarily, because that's going to affect your your means to uh, your income, but through selling items in your house, unwanted items, so you can start accruing or accumulating this thousand pounds, so you've got some money behind you. And then once you've got this thousand pounds behind you, put it in some premium bonds, put it out of arm's reach, so it's there, right? And then you've got yourself financially well organised in respect to that. Um, if you've got children, you pay them pocket money, put them on the pocket money system, agree an amount of money per age pay it automatically from your account onto their account, or to whether they've got a bank account or a prepay card, um, and systematize and automate that so that you know that they're buying their wants and you're covering their needs, okay? So if they want to buy something from the shop, they wanna go get some sweets, they wanna go out with their friends for a coffee, they're buying it with their own money, um, but you're buying their needs, you're covering their needs. Um, and make sure that they're empowered to do this and make sure they chip in around the house and help out. Make sure they're earning this money so you're giving them right life skills for it. Um, and then once that section's done, so you've got your, your bank house system done, your pocket money done, start looking at things like your will and your lasting power of attorneys. Now, if you're on universal credit, the probability is you earn less than £12,000 a year. If you're on universal credit, you'll probably get these free. So lasting power of attorneys, there is an exemption um, for people on benefits and things, so you don't pay for them. Still got to fill the forms and send them off, but hey, come on, let's download lo those forms. This is something you can do during this period and make the most of it. So download the forms, fill the lasting power of attorneys in. There's two, health and welfare, property and affairs. And you might think, well, I don't have any property. Just get them done because this is a period of your life. It's not the rest of your life. But these lasting power of attorneys will be in place forever. Get the field in, get them sent off, done, and get yourself a will. Get yourself a will sorted out so you feel organized, you're doing the right thing. So you've, what you've done is you've got yourself organized and you've ticked off three of the essentials on the foundations of step three. So you've gone from step one through step two and you're now on step three. You've got your thousand pounds emergency cash being saved up. You've got your will in place and you've got your lasting power of attorneys. That, guys, is massive growth. So from listening to this on um, before of just what's coming in, what's going out, and just sort of getting by and having no sort of direction, you've now sort of said to yourself, okay, what do I want to do with my life? What am I going to do during this period? How can I make the most of it? What, how can I turn things around and change things? And then you've sort of got yourself organized financially, so you've got yourself some goals, got yourself organized financially, sorted your banking out, got your children educated a little bit on money, getting them involved with things. And you've got yourself sorted with things like lasting power of attorneys, wills, and you've got some money or you're on, on plan to have some money saved up. That is massive growth. That is massive improvement. And you've taken a difficult period of your life and made some changes, which you should be really proud of. And you should, shouldn't underestimate how powerful that will be for the ongoing, for your future decisions. The next Yeah, thing I think that's really important. That, and again, I know you're a big, big believer in it, but don't forget to take pride in what you've done and congratulate yourself when you are making some of these decisions. They may seem small to you now, but they're not. And it's important that you do take stock and take a moment to think, yeah, look what I've done now. Yeah, I think, I think it's really important to make consistent small decisions. Consistent small improvement. Most people want to make a big change. So they think that's the way things should do it. But the big change doesn't only take time, it's a lot of effort. And you've got to have the right mindset. By making smaller, consistent changes, you get lots of quick wins. And every time you do something right, every time you do something well, your body releases dopamine and you feel good. Okay? Um, so that's what it's all about, just feeling good, taking consistent things. If you're on a diet and trying to lose weight, rather than focus on losing a stone, focus on losing half a pound or a pound. It'll just take a consistent decision to move things forward. But remember what I said, this is a period of your life, it's not the rest of your life. So have a now, now think, 
what do I want to do? Are there any courses I can do? Are there any skills that I can learn now why I have the time potentially that will enable me to develop and grow and become a, um, have a better career going forward? So uh, use this as an opportunity to start sharpening the sword, as it were, to start developing your own personal self. In reading books is a great thing. So maybe set yourself a goal of reading a book a month um, and you can go through an awful lot of information over that period of time. So, yeah, sounds good. Okay. So yeah. what's, I keep coming back to that original mindset because everything that you've just talked about there, it is all about completely shifting your mindset away from look at the situation I'm in and, and feeling down about it to really just focusing in a completely different direction. And I think it, I just want to emphasize that again, that that mindset shift, it, it comes right back to the beginning and your outcomes and, and what you were saying about that. That's where it all starts, isn't it? It, it is. And look, I, I'm going to just pick on two things you said. You said, um, look at the situation I'm in. You ask yourself a question and feeling down about it. Your physiology was down. Does that make sense? And, and that is, to, but it's true. I, I'm, I'm not a critique. I'm, I'm just sort of picking up on it because that is the case. It's the questions you ask in the physiology that you carry that will dictate how you feel and how you feel will dictate what you do. Okay. And trust me, guys, if you listen to this, if somebody else has done something in life, you too can do it. You don't have to be the way things are. If you're going through a difficult period right now, it doesn't have to be like this the rest of your life. Don't expect to make a change overnight. Decide what it is you want. Take consistent actions to move towards what you want. Um, and allow time to be your friend. Just try and enjoy the process. Enjoy the process of developing and changing rather than expecting things to happen overnight. I think that's the thing. The thing with um, one of the things that I spend most of my time on when I'm coaching people is trying to change their mindset from immediate gratification. Okay, so nowadays we buy something on Amazon, it's here tomorrow. I want to watch a film, I just go to the channel on Netflix or iTunes and press play, and I've got it. Do you know, when I was growing up, I used to have to get on my bike, cycle down to my Blockbusters video, or a video Solent as it was around the corner, look through things, and take the case, I'm sorry, that video's out. So I'd have to then go back and find another film that I wanted to watch, cycle back, put it in the video recorder, press play and then fast forward all the com credits and commercial at the begin till I got to the film. Okay. That was delayed gratification. It took over <laughs> an hour. Whereas now we watched a movie last night. It was just, and it was paused while we were getting our supper ready just to watch the film. You know, it's like instant gratification. If we want anything, you know, I could, when I grew up, I couldn't go shopping on a Sunday. The shops were closed on a Sunday. You know, you'd have to get off your butt and get on the bus or go on your bike and cycle into the town and buy the thing and then cycle back kind of thing. We would have to take time. Now, there's nothing wrong with efficiencies. It's great. It's made our lives, but it's making our brains expect things immediately all the time. Uh, we rarely now save for things. We put on the credit card and then we pay it off someday. If we want something, we'll put it on finance and we'll pay it off over time. Um, and we're now getting a bit more savvy towards the cost of these things, but you know, lenders are offering interest free credit and stuff, but still it's just finance. It's just instant gratification. The emotional well being of deciding what it is you want, saving up your money and then buying it is very, very strong. You know, it's actually delayed gratification actually means you've earned it and you've been re rewarded for it. And I entirely suggest you try it. Um, just putting the effort in, working, saving, and getting the money out at the end, and then buying it cash. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. So, um, All right. with, with, well, with, with, without upsetting people and without trying to come across as a universal credit expert, I hope this has given people some idea that if you're going through a period of time when you're on universal credit, um, you can still implement some strategies from the money plan. You can still decide what it is you want. You can still put the bank account system in place, put the children's pocket money system in place, and most importantly, sort out at least the first three of the financial foundations of a thousand pounds emergency cash, your will, and your lasting power of attorneys. 
and decide how you want to live the rest of your life. Um, and maybe do some studying, get some sharpen the sword, get some skills under your belt, whatever area that might be, so that when you are qualified, you can go and get that job and you can earn 10 times what you're getting on universal credit and be very proud of yourself in the life that you've done and be a very good influence to your children uh, on how things should be in the future. So hopefully that's good. Um, thank you so much for the questions, Paul. As always, really appreciate you all uh, messaging in with your questions and stuff. It's been really, really helpful. I do like it. Um, make sure you follow me on social media and uh, go to warranty.com and sign up for the Money Planner, which is our weekly update. Gives you all this good information. And if you get any questions, let me know. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great weekend.